DJ. Hey, M. And hello, listeners. And welcome back to This, That, and Chit Chat. A podcast that's strictly entertaining. What in the world? You know, we're just mixing it up. Yeah, right? mixing it up today. We're doing something very different today. Mm-hmm. This entire episode, basically, is going to be scripted. So fun. This is a story of how we discovered who Paul M. was. Some could say our biggest fan. But probably not, because I don't know if he listened to every episode. I don't know, but it's crazy that he listened at all. So, um, strap in. Get ready. (laughs) Here we go. Here we go. Dun, dun, dun. This podcast launched on March 2nd, 2022, and for about a year produced some feel-good content without any trouble. Then, on April 24th, 2023, out of nowhere, the first strike. A commenter going by the alias Paul M. left a seemingly innocuous comment. Paul M., April 24th, 2023. Stunning. Stumbled into this while doing follow-up research to my senior thesis on the CFR. Also, on the day I discovered the words to Klaatu's Beatles replacement conspiracy, Sub Rosa Subway is literally Brahmesian tune. I left both charmed and bemused by the lyrical tension between the hosts. DJ's laugh a broke counterpoint to Emily's sub Rosa yet ironic affirmations. I will be back for sure, if only to follow up on hinted at connections to Mason flavored conspiracies. That may become my professional thesis. Alfred Beach would be proud, would pay good money to see both DJ and Emily perform live. We were ecstatic. Finally a new fan and someone we didn't know personally. Someone just stumbled upon our podcast and actually enjoyed it. Maybe the algorithm was finally working in our favor. Maybe we were on the verge of going viral. Little did we know, Paul M. was not who he claimed to be. And no, it wasn't Paul McCartney, despite what his email address suggested. But he also wasn't some student writing his thesis on CFR. Whatever that is. And we'll be right back. DJ, do you have a rant? I do have a rant. My rant today is LinkedIn. Really? I hate it. What do I you hate, hate that it, it exists. And I hate that there's like a... That it, like, has, like, a set way of, like, the posts on LinkedIn are terrible. Mm -hmm. There's, like, LinkedIn influencers. Okay. It's just dumb. What a dumb thing. I get that. Yeah. Also, there's, like, 45 notifications every time I log on. Sure. And it's just, wish so-and-so congrats. Or in the minute you log on, people send you those automated messages of, like, we think you'd be a good fit for. Yeah. No thanks. Yeah. Okay. Dumb. What's your... My rant is also work-related. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And normally me and DJ are (laughs) pro-work. But I found out today that a project I probably devoted like 80 or 90 hours to shouldn't have ever been routed to (gasps) me. And so all of the work that I did, while it helped the individual, it, it meant nothing. Yeah. You shouldn't have had to do it. I shouldn't have had to do it. Oh, my gosh. And they came back today and they said... Oh, turns out this shouldn't have been in Emily's queue ever. Um, please continue so and so handling it. No, sorry, no, blah blah. And the person who told me today was the one who had made the decision. It should be like right. months ago. Was like this is Emily's responsibility. And then today came back was like this should never have been Emily's responsibility. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> did did they recognize that they were the ones who? No, gave, no that's so they funny. Said, Why have we wasted all this effort? And I'm like, because you told me to. <laughs> That was it. Ooh, fun. So fun. The nightmare of Paul M. (laughs) began as a fun diversion. His second comment left us assuming he was a troll. Paul M., September 13th, 2023. I remain a charmed, if inconsistent, audience of the podcast. Perhaps more so since having seen both DJ and Emily live sharing a stage. Shout out for Bluey was timely to the point of a Bader Meinhof phenomenon sighting, which is my new academic interest. Emily obviously understands long humor, which is my long standing ulnar nerve interest. Bingo, I feel much more prepared for possible bad roommate situations. Bandit! But DJ and Emily have simultaneously motivated me to look for, if not become, the good roommate. Cognitive bias, perhaps, but you already know what I meant. Kudos and regards, Paul M. 
This couldn't be a real person. Nobody talks like this. And so we became, began to compile a list of possible suspects. People who we knew who loved to troll and could feasibly create a persona such as this. At the top of our list was Jacob Seeley. Longtime listeners will remember Jacob as one of our first guests and the creator of our intro and outro. Jacob is the ultimate troll. He constantly says some nonsense with a straight face, just daring you to call him out. That, combined with the fact that he's well-read and knowledgeable on many different subjects, made him the perfect target. Now, we assumed that whoever was the troll would admit to it upon being accused of trollish behavior. Speaking as a troll, almost as fun as carrying on a joke nobody else knows about or understands is getting found out for a long-running troll. This assumption proved to be correct in the end, but during the process of figuring out who Paul M. was, it made it really frustrating when all of our best guesses came back no, starting with Jacob, who flat out denied the allegations. And so we let it go, with Paul M. occasionally commenting and us occasionally speculating on who, M. Pa- on who Paul M. might be. We thought we had another suspect dead to rights when we remembered that my brother had trolled the podcast before before by subscribing as multiple Yankees players, but he denied it as well. We also thought it might be Zach, another faithful listener who loved a good practical joke, but again, denial. It wasn't until Paul M. began leaving us explicit clues, as any sociopath does, eventually wanting to be caught, that we caught a break in the case. We'll be right back. What's your wreck, Emily? My wreck today is this first day picture of my nephew. It was his first day of preschool. Oh my gosh. Is that not the best photo you've ever seen? I love how his backpack is bigger than him. His backpack literally goes from his shoulders to the back of his knees. <laughs> and he is cheesing so hard. So cute with his gelled up hair. He First day of preschool. Oh, So excited. Amazing. We'll have to so, post yeah. it on the gram. Maybe with his yeah. face blurred. Yeah. Or if you know me, DM me and yeah, I'll send yeah, it yeah. to you. Okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah so everyone can see it. What's your wreck? My wreck. Um, so first of all, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. If if I were to say to you, I'm going to recommend a TV show, mm-hmm. what streaming service would you assume it's from? For for you? Mm-hmm. Apple TV. It is. Sunny on Apple TV+. Plus. Oh, okay. Very good. What is it about? It's um, So Rashida Jones mm. uh, plays a woman who uh, has lost her husband and son. And it's a mystery about whether they're dead or alive. What happened to them? Too spooky or not too bad? No, no, no. It's more like a like semi dark comedy. Like it's not crazy dark. Yeah. Like I would say teenagers can probably watch it, though it does have a lot of cursing. Mm. But like, yeah, and there's like the yakuza involved, and Mm. so yeah, very fun. Okay. Um. Yes, and it's on Apple TV Plus. Because if there's a streaming platform, DJ supports. Oh my gosh! It's Apple TV it's Plus. always good. Yeah. So, anyway, great. Mm-hmm. Finally, on May thirty first, Paul M left his first hint as to his identity. Granted, we didn't catch it, but we hadn't heard from him in a while, and so we commented on it. And then he followed up by commenting again on June tenth, to which we called him a dude with a sword on his wall and a ponytail. This, is, this offended our fragile foe, who then had to defend his honor and left us the final clues that would lead to his discovery. On June 13th, he commented again about not wearing a fedora or having a ponytail, which we discussed on the pod with my sister Rachel. She, she suggested that he was leaving us clues, that maybe we look at the letters he capitalized or something like that. Paul, ever the sociopath, loved this and told us to pay attention to what Rachel said, even if we had to rewind or slow it down. In fact, it was this final comment that had that finally put all the pieces together for us. Paul M., July 14th, 2024. Okay, I'm behind and haven't listened to this one yet, but I have so much to say. First, congratulations, Deej. Sincerely, much tears, smiles, laughs, and anticipation across my kith and kin. Next, please listen to Rachel, even if you have to slow down or rewind. Me think she has insight. Additionally, here's another clue for you all. Les Miserables, Frozen, Napoleon Dynamite. We are interconnected in time and place. Finally, I remain struck how DJ and Emily can so enthusiastically indulge the warp and woof of pop and not-so-popular culture. And the tapestry becomes an insightful journey into a generation. Epilogue. 
<laughs> Shifrobe and mimosa. Mayhaps one is nearly an interesting anagram. Again, I am um, Paul M. And let me tell you, DJ became <laughs> obsessed with this comment. He went back to Rachel's interview and searched the transcript, trying to figure out what she said. We accused her, realizing that she never actually de- act- actually denied becoming being Paul M. We also found what we thought was a pattern that led to the identity of Paul M. in the misspelling of Am in his sign-off and the anagram Mimosa. And what's your random question for today? My random question is, when you go on vacation and you're like looking for souvenirs, Mm -hmm. who do you buy souvenirs for? This is a very valid question. Uh... Typically, yeah, my mom, sure, my sister, sure, my two roommates. Mm-hmm. That's been the go-to. Yeah, yeah. Recently, it's been identified my mother does not like souvenirs. Really? Yeah. So I stopped doing that. Fascinating. So for London, I got my roommates and my boyfriend. My sister did not want one. Your mom and sister don't like souvenirs. Yeah, they've, they've bowed out. Interesting. Yeah. What about okay. You? Um, you know, most honestly, like. It's just whoever kind of comes to mind. Mm. Like this last trip, we actually bought you a, um, a calendar of Scottish men in kilts with their oh. butt showing, but forgot to give it to you. Oh, interesting. So yeah, it just you know came to mind. Uh-huh. We thought you and your roommates might enjoy that. So we got it for you and forgot to give it to you. So. <laughs> but yeah, it's just kind of, you know, whoever we're thinking of, mostly definitely like, Immediate family, uh-huh. but then you know if I see something that. Do makes you do me it for everyone in your both immediate families? No, definitely not. Oh, okay. Definitely not. Um, it's more you see an object if you think someone fits it, rather yeah, than yeah. trying to find something for, for the sure, person. for okay. sure. Or like if we know, like oh hey someone, you know, likes this kind of thing. Yeah. We're gonna be in this country. Let's look yeah. for it. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just like who comes to mind. But th- that's mostly who I'm thinking about. And then if someone else, most of the time, if I find something for someone who's not my immediate family, it's just like a joke, yeah. like a like a Scottish butt yeah. calendar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's your random question? Who do you think would win in a fight? Okay. Uh, Donald Duck. Sure. Or Goofy. Donald Duck. Really? More scrappy. Hmm. See, and I think he'd let his emotions get away from him. Mm, you think like, Goofy... Like, I think he'd get so fired up yeah. that he couldn't fight. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. What, Goofy's a little more... Uh, like, he's just going to wall up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I get that. Mm-hmm. He's also bigger. He's got the size advantage. He does. Yeah. Except I think they're the same size in mascot form. Oh, are you talking mascot? Well, I just think, like, even in the cartoon, they're about the same size, are, are they? they not? I just thought uh, Goofy was taller. I mean, a dog on its hind legs will be taller than a duck. For, for sure. sure. For sure. But, yeah. Yeah. See, Mimosa Unraveled could spell I am Sam. Sam was my brother. And so when we saw the misspelled am, we thought for sure that's what it was. But again, he denied it. And so we went back to the drawing board, or rather, the seating chart. You see, what ended up leaving to, leading to the discovery of the true identity of Paul M. was the simple obsession it created within me to figure it out and the realization that the first comment came two days after my wedding. At DJ's wedding, I gave a toast, and I themed it after the rants, Rex, and random question segment of the pod, and as such, announced to everyone that we had a podcast together. Realizing the date, I pulled out the seating chart and scoured it for clues, but the work had already been done for me. As soon as I came across the names of a couple who had attended my wedding, I knew we had our guy. The anagrams proved fruitless, but other clues that had been left gave it away. Specifically, there were a couple of things that tipped me off. One, this person called me Deej. Two, they said their family was happy to hear of my wife's pregnancy. And three, they mentioned Frozen, Napoleon Dynamite, and Les Mis. This third clue ended up being the final straw, because I've only watched Frozen one time, and it was the day after my mission ended and a fulfillment of a promise my mom had made for me to a little girl that I would watch Frozen with her when I got home from my mission. This little girl, who's now in high school, 
couldn't have known at the time, but this one play date ended up being one of the most important events in the history of this podcast. And that's when it hit me. That girl's mom, Melissa, calls me Deej. Melissa is one of my mom's best friends and would have known that we were pregnant and told her family. Les Mis, Frozen, and Napoleon Dynamite are all movies either myself or my parents had seen at some point with a member of Melissa's family. So DJ reached out, accusing Melissa of this trollish behavior, and she denied it, but said, maybe her husband? I doubted it. I mean, her husband doesn't call me Deej, and there's no way a 55-year-old man would listen to our podcast week after week for over a year. But it was my last chance, so I reached out. And listeners, we'll be right back. Just kidding. There's (laughs) nothing else we could break for. (laughs) We don't have any sponsors. (laughs) I reached out to Eric, who said... Who just said, a small part of me is wondering what would happen if I agreed to be Paul M. Would that be important? And just like that, our last hope was dashed. He didn't know who Paul M. was and wondered why it would be even important that he was Paul M. Or so he wanted us to believe, because, like the psychopath he is, he couldn't leave well enough alone. And Eric later texted me one more time. Ironically, I am sitting here in a meeting with the temple project manager. He wants to build a temple down the road here. Maybe makes you miss Mason. Just like that, the final two clues fell into place. In an earlier comment, Paul M. had mentioned towering T's in his professional life, colliding with a new but high-profile spiritual refuge and Miss Mason. Could that be a really bad anagram of Mimosa? Maybe. Still not quite sure on that one. But we had our guy. Even if he wouldn't confirm it directly, Paul M. was in fact my family friend Eric, a 55-year-old man who is conclusively the king of trolls. Crazy. That is so wild. No, it's crazy. And guys, like, I have found out at the same time you have who Paul M. is. Like, I didn't know till we recorded this. Yeah. And I genuinely... Because you had mentioned you thought it was someone at your wedding. Yeah. I thought it was maybe a friend from high school at your wedding. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Not a grown man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, crazy. And and just to, like, give a little more history. So, this man, we're, I mean, we're really good friends with this family. Mm-hmm. And we did, like, a white elephant one year or something. And I, one of them got the gift that I brought, which was this really ugly painting mm-hmm. that I got at the thrift store. Really ugly is too far. Just this really not great painting. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they held on to it for at least 10 years, mm-hmm. 10 or 15 years, until I got married and gave it to me on my wedding day That's pretty as fun. a gift. Yeah. Like, these guys, this is what they do. They do these long... That's a long troll. That's a long troll. But this is, I mean, this is how who they are. And anyway, so once I realized, like, oh, my gosh, those movies connected to that yeah. family, I was like, it's them. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, anyway, congrats. Congrats, Paul M. That was such a good prank. Totally. Because you really had us wondering for a long time. For a long time. And, and we, ha- we know so many people who would do it. And we were aggressive towards him. <laughs> Like, we we were certain. Yeah. Like, I sat down with Jacob at church, and I said, cut the crap, Jacob. (laughs) And he was like, I promise not. Well, and your brother denied it. And then we were like, come on. Like, we figured it out. You can't lie to me. And he was like, I promise I'm not. Yeah. Like, we figured out this little mimosa thing. Yeah. I am Sam. Yeah. Which, like, had it been Sam, so I don't know if that OM at the end was actually just a typo, or if, like, there's some other clue he was trying to give that we didn't figure out. I don't know. I also don't know, like, if Mimosa is Miss Mason or mm. if Shifferobe is actually the one that's the anagram. Yeah. Because Eric fits in there. So I don't know if. Anyway, I don't know. Wild. I don't know. And I don't know how long he was trying to hint at who he was. Could it be Eric and Melissa was the anagram? Could have been. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So wild. So wild. So congrats. It was I funny. love thinking yeah. that there's this 55 year old man. <laughs> Like, sitting there thinking every week, like, what do I comment? Because, again, if you listen to those comments, they take time and effort. Oh, yeah. Well, and he clearly had, like, actually been listening to the episodes, right? He's like, go back and listen to Rachel. He, like, makes a comment on some other stuff we talked about, right? Like, Wild. Which is so funny. So good. Yeah. 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 It's just everything I aspire to be. 
and it, it's fitting for you. Like totally. I see that future. Totally. Yeah. totally. So um, anyway, keep it up. Obviously, you know, another troll like this will be hard, but you know, we love a good practical joke on this yeah. pod. So if you can figure out something unique to do, we're here do for it. it. I will say last week I put up our um, drafts. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I put up a poll as to who had the best. Uh huh. Blew you out of the water. I'm going to be so honest. Whoa. 69 to, 70, to 31%. What? Yeah. And some of our responses that we got were uh, your wife. Yeah. She said, sorry, Em. I figured his numbers would be low and wanted to help his confidence. You picked better. <laughs> <laughs> Zach said, when DJ said Pete's Dragon, I yelled in my car. <laughs> uh, there was a lot of hate for Pete's Dragon. Who it doesn't a, like Pete's Dragon? Everyone. D- Dallin said, boo, Toy Story 2 is amazing. Yeah, he does like Toy Story 2. It's not that, that great. Um Abby says, I'm sorry, but without Mulan or Remember the Titans represented, I'll have to abstain from the vote. I didn't even see Remember the Titans when I went through. I don't think it would have made my list, but it didn't even. Sh- no. I didn't even realize that was a Disney movie. And Mulan was one of my alternates. Mm. Um, and then. Nobody commented on how what an amazing pick Pirates of the Caribbean was? No. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, maybe I'll keep going. Your mom said, I only picked DJ because he chose Encanto. Sure. Best Disney movie of all time. Um, Mikkel says, you each have two that I love and the rest of your groups I like too. It's a tie. Okay, well. Oh, Tyler did come through with, it was close, but Pirates is too much of a banger. Yeah. So good. And Tyler brought up um, Endgame, mm-hmm. which I only didn't pick because it's like Marvel first. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I agree. That would have been a great one. And then Amy said, The tower drop right at Disney being Emperor's new groove themed is a stroke of genius. Yes. Toy Story 2 being the worst Disney sequel is a wild take. <laughs> May I direct your attention to the monstrosity that is Cinderella 2? See also Mulan 2, Beauty and the Beast, Enchanted Christmas, Tarzan 2. I could keep going. Well, but most of those are direct to video. Mm. Whereas Toy Story 2 did go to theaters. Yeah, and I didn't even know those other ones exi- existed. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, but yes, Disney has produced some terrible sex sequels. Yeah. But most of them go direct to video. I think the only ones that have gone not to video is like, of the classics, is like Lion King 2, which went to theaters, I believe. I think so. Toy Story 2, and then obviously Frozen 2. Yeah. Um, speaking of, what about Lion King 1 and a half? What about it? Have you seen it? No, maybe what? once. A long oh time my ago. gosh, that was a good one. I don't love Lion King. Like it's fine. Really? Yeah. So I don't when you picked that. it, I was like, huh. I don't get that. Allison also put it in her top five picks. Totally, so. totally. I think yeah. so. Did you see I watched Pirates last week? No. Did you put it on your letterbox? I did. Oh, it must have only been on there for like a day or two. Probably I watched. Meaning um, on like my like homepage because yeah, yeah, I didn't see it. I but, said I could have used like thirty minutes less of skeletons fighting. <laughs> I just felt like it was a little long. <laughs> that was it. Okay. Well, anyway. Yeah. Um, anything else? No, I think that's it. Great. Let us know uh, what you thought of the scripted Yeah, if you want us to do more. Episode. Probably not, but, uh, <laughs> you know, if we can find a reason to. But there was no other way for us both to participate in unveiling who this right, was. Right, because otherwise it would have just been me explaining it. And, and I'd you be like, listening. I don't know who this person right. is. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, and Paul M., if you're still listening, we'd love a reaction. I should have texted him. I didn't, so. Yeah, if he could, like, film a video that we could put up on the gram. That would be funny. That'd be great, because I I, I think people want to put a face to the name. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask him if I can put up a picture or something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Wow. All right. Is that it? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, love you guys. Bye. Bye. (laughs)